Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is on integer exponents. So we're dealing with exponents in this lesson, and they're always integers. Later we'll get in fractional exponents in Integrated Math 2, and that's at the beginning of the year because I teach that, so, um, um, and so that's not going to be there until then. This is all integers, okay? And I'm going to go over these with you again when I see you in IM2 also. So um, uh, there's our, our common core strand for our most awesome teachers, and so how can we use the properties of integer exponents? All right, so I'm going to go backwards on this, you guys. So then the book, I'm going to start right here, okay? So this table shows the... Uh, the table below shows the powers of uh, 5, 4, and 3. So 5 to the first is 5, 4 to the first is 4, 3 to the first is 3. Let's put those guys in right there, okay? And then, okay, 5 squared, 5 squared is 25, 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, okay? And so what I want you to recognize as we go this way, when the powers increase by 1, we multiply by the base. Okay, here the base is 5. So 5 times 5 gave us 25. 4 times another 4 gave us 16. 3 times another 3 gave us this 9. So let's do that again. So 5 to the third, I'm going to take 25 and multiply it by, by 5. Well, imagine if you had 5 quarters. How much would that be? That would be a dollar 25. So 125. Okay, and then uh, 4 to the third is 16 times 4, which is 64. 3 to the third is 3 times 9, which is 27. Let's go ahead and put those in there. Now, these other ones are a little bit hard to do in your head, you guys. So 5 to the fourth is going to be 5 times 125. I'm going to do that right here. So 5 times 125, multiply the 5. 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. So there's our 25. And now we multiply. So remember doing this, you guys. So so we did this 5 times 5. So I'm, I'm suspecting your teachers are not letting you use calculators. And that's a good thing, you guys, okay? Um, you guys turn your calculators on and you totally shut your brains off. So we want you to keep developing your math skills by not letting you have a calculator. So I won't let you have one all the way through Integrated Math 1. Our whole school is like that. Anyways, so 5 times 5 is 25, so we put the, the units digit down here for the 5 part of the 25 and the 10 digit up there. And then we do 5 times 2 is 10, and then we add this, which is going to be 12. So we'll put a 2 down here and carry the 1 for the 10's digit right there in the 12, okay? And then now we're going to go um, uh, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6, so this is 625, so 5 to the 4th. 625. Okay, let's do the same thing with 4. 4 is going to be the last 4. Here's 4 to the 3rd, so times 1 more 4 will give me 4 to the 4th. 4 times 4 is 16. We'll carry, put the 6 down here and carry the 1 right there. And then we're going to do uh, 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25, so we'll write 25 right there. So 256. Okay, 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is going to be 3 to the 3rd times 1 more 3, so 27 times 3. So here we go, 27 times 3 is 81, so we'll just go ahead and put that in there, okay? All right, so uh, what the book would like you to recognize is um, uh, as we go to the right, we're dividing by 5. So as the exponents decrease, we divide by 5. Uh, 125 divided by 5 is 25. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Notice how the exponents are going 4, 3, 2, 1. So we're dividing by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And notice how the exponents go 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. They decrease every time. So 5 to the 0 is 1. 4 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 0 is 1. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So when we divide by 5 again, you guys, so dividing by 5 is like putting a 5 underneath. Okay, so 1, so it's this number divided by 5, which is 1 fifth. This number divided by 4, because these bases are 4, which is 1 fourth, and this is 1 third. Okay, notice how the exponents decrease, 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 and then it still decreases. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So I'm going to continue dividing this by 5, which is the same as multiplying by 1 fifth. So 1 fifth times 1 fifth is 1 25th, okay? And then this one would be 1 fourth times 1 fourth is 1 16th. 1 third times 1 third is 1 ninth. And look here, we have some questions. So write a general rule for the value of a number to a power of 0. So here's my 0. Look, all three of these numbers to the 0 power all equal 1. So I'm going to say that uh, a to the 0 equals 1. 
All right, and then it says here, write a general rule for the value of a to the negative n. Well, the only ones I have are these ones here with negative exponents. So let's look at this. 5 to the negative 1 is 1 over 5, or 1 over 5 to the positive 1. 4 to the negative 1 is 1 over 4 to the positive 1. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 over 3 to the positive 1. Over here, 5 to the negative 2 is 1 over 25, and 1 over 25, 25 is 5 squared, so this is the same as 1 over 5 squared. Similarly, this is 1 over 4 squared, 1 over 3 squared. So when you have a negative exponent, you can throw it downstairs and it becomes a positive exponent. So a to a negative power is going to be 1 over a to the positive power. So, so that's our rule, uh, two of our rules that we just discovered right there. All right, so let's continue with this right here, okay? So um, uh, here we have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's going to equal 3 to what power? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be 3 to the 5th right there, okay? Now let's look at this. This is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. There's four of them, so I'm going to put 3 to the 4th right there. This is one more 3, so this will be 3 to the 1st right there, okay? So we get 4 and 1 right there. And then all of them together, here's 4 and 1, that's 5 of them, so these guys equal 3 to the 5th, okay? So we can group them and still get 3 to the 5th. How about this one? This is 3 to the 3rd, this is 3 to the 2nd, okay? And then when we use all of them together, we get 3 to the 5th right there. So let's put uh, 3 and 2 in there. So what pattern do we see when multiplying two powers that have the same base? Now notice the bases don't change, you guys. The bases stay the same. They're all base 3s right there. These are all base 3s, base 3, base 3. So don't make the mistake and start multiplying 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times. You can if you want, but we're just looking at the exponents at the moment. Okay, so what pattern do we see when we multiply powers with the same base? They all have the same base. Well, what do we do? They all gave us 3 to the 5th right there. Here, 4 plus 1 is 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, so we add the exponents. That's what they want you to, result, uh, to, to see. So the result had the same base, still a 3 in this case, with an exponent to the sum of the exponents of those powers right there. All right, let's do that with this guy. So use your patterns to complete this equation. So the one that we just learned. So 5 squared times 5 to the 5th, where it's going to be 5 to the, we're going to add those exponents. 2 plus 5 is 2, 5 to the 7th. Okay, all right, let's try this, you guys. Okay, so complete the following right here. So 4 to the 5th over, over 4 cubed right here. I'm right here, 4 to the 5th over 4 cubed. Here's our 4 to the 5th. Here's our 4 cubes right there. Now what I'm going to do is start canceling. 4 over 4 cancels, 4 over 4 cancels, 4 over 4 cancels. We're left with these two guys right here. Okay, so we get 4 times 4, which is 4 squared right there. So what pattern did you see right there? Okay, so here... What pattern do you see? 4 to the 5th over 4 to the 3rd gave us 4 squared. Can you see we just subtracted these exponents right here? We didn't do anything with the base. We kept the base the same. We just subtracted the exponents. So what patterns do you see when you divide two powers having the same base? They have to have the same base, you guys. So the result has the same base with an exponent that's equal to the difference. The difference of the top uh, exponent minus the bottom exponent. Okay, so let's do that with this guy right here. Okay, so we have 6 to the 8th over 6 to the 3rd. Since the 6's are the same base, then we just subtract these exponents. 8 minus 3 is 5, so it's going to equal 6 to the 5th. And that's all the book is asking for right now. Now, 6 to the 5th is a very large number, you guys. It's 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6, which is a very, very big number. And I, we're not worried about that right now. Remember, we don't have calculators, so we're just manipulating the exponents. Notice the base stayed the same as base 6 right there. All right, so let's complete the following equations right here, okay? So here we have 5 cubed squared. So here's our 5 cubed right here. Here's our 5 cubed for that right there. So they're looking for, you guys recognize, that's just this exponent right there. You're going to put in that 2 right there. Now since it's squared, any quantity squared means we can write that quantity 2 times. So 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So that's what this is. This is our 5 to the 3rd squared. 5 to the 3rd times 5 to the 3rd. How many 5's do you see? I see 3 here. I see 3 more here. So if we added them, there would be 6 right there. So we get 5 to the 6. Okay, and what pattern did you notice? 
5 to the 3rd squared, and we got 5 to the 6th. Well, it looks like 3 times 2 is 6, so we multiplied those exponents. So something like that. The result is the same base. Notice the base did not change. It stayed as 5, but then the powers are multiplied. All right, so let's use that uh, pattern with this. So 7 squared to the 4th, multiply the powers. 2 times 4, 8. So 7 to the 8th power. Again, that's all they want. The 7 to the 8th is a very, very large number, so they don't want you to crank that out. They just want you to recognize what's the exponent doing right there. All right, so exponent rules, you guys. Here we go. Anything to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power equals 1. Okay, I've had an Algebra 2 book a long time ago when I taught at a, at a different high school. And it would do a lot of stuff. It would go, it would say, they put a big bracket right here and do lots and lots and lots and lots of math and then close out that bracket over here. And when they close it out, they put to the zero power and those dirty, rotten rats. Anything to the zero equals one. So all that stuff that was inside the brackets right there, it just equals one. Anything to the zero power equals one. Okay, now as long as these bases are the same, then we keep the base and just add those exponents, okay, when it's sitting like that. All right, and then when we have powers, um, I'm sorry, when we're dividing, you guys, x to the m over x to the n, this is where we subtract. Okay, so anything to 0 is 1. This is where we add. This is where we subtract. Powers to powers, we multiply. So if, um, if we have a power raised to another power, we just multiply those powers. Okay, and then negative exponents, you guys. So if we had x to the negative m, you float it downstairs, it becomes a 1 over x to the positive m. Now, this x doesn't equal 0, just means we can't have 0 in the denominator. Okay, you'll always see that restriction whenever you have a, a fraction in there. Okay, all right, and then uh, this one here, you guys, if the negative exponent is in the denominator, then you flip it and put it in the numerator, and it becomes a positive exponent. So 1 over x to the negative n is the same as x to the positive n. Again, we can't have a zero in the denominator, so I just restrict it by saying everything except x equals zero. All right, when you have a fraction to a negative exponent, you just flip the fraction and it becomes a positive exponent. Again, neither one of those denominators can be zero. Okay, those last two are not in the book, you guys, but they're hecka handy, you guys. So I like showing those in, their, in all of my textbooks. They weren't in the textbooks, but they sure are handy when you come across them. All right, last one, you guys, when you have different bases and they're being multiplied, but those that product right there is being raised to the power, then you can do each of those bases to the power. So a to the n, b to the n. All right, let's try some of these, you guys. All right, so simplify each expression. Here's the rules that we just went over right here. So here's a power raised to a power. So that is going to be this guy, powers raised to powers. I multiply. So 3 times 2, we're going to do 10 to the 3 times 2 power, which is 10 to the 6. And 10 to any power is a 0 with however many powers that is, okay? So I'm, I say 0, it's a 1. So 10 to the 6 power is going to be a 1 with 6 zeros. So that's a million. Okay, all right, this one here, this is 4 to the 3rd, 5 to the 3rd. Notice these bases are different. That's that last rule. So 4 to the 3rd, uh, 5 to the 3rd, right here, I'm going backwards. It's going to be the same as 4 times 5 to the 3rd right there. Now, there's all kinds of correct ways to get the correct answer on these. So many that when a student says, hey, Mr. Mr. Math Blog, uh, I got this uh, correct answer doing it a different way. Did I do it right? And I will say yes, because there are many, many correct ways to do that. And I just don't have time to go over all the correct ways, you know, unless they come in at lunch or before school. But uh, anyways, there's several correct ways. So if you're getting the correct answer doing it a different way, then you're doing it right. Okay, now since both of these are being raised to the third power, then I just combine them 4 times 5. 4 times 5 is 20, so it's now 20 to the third, okay? All right, so I get that. And then 20, I'm just, it doesn't matter. There's other ways to do it. They took it from here and did 20 to the third and got 8,000. I'm just going to go backwards and do 2 to the third, 10 to the third. 2 to the third is 8. 10 to the third is 1,000. So 8 times 1,000 is 8,000. You can do it other ways, too, and still get 8,000. Okay, here, these are all in that second rule. I'm going to add all these exponents. So it's going to be the same base, 8 to this exponent plus this exponent plus this guy right there. So I get 0 plus negative 3 plus 5 is going to get me 8 to the positive 2, 64. 
All right, here we're going to subtract them, 9 minus 11. So 7 to the 9 minus 11 power, which is negative 2, which is 1 over 7 to the positive 2. Since 7 squared is 49, we get 1 over 49. Okay, your book wants us to do a couple more of these. Okay, again, there's several correct ways. It totally depends on what kind of mood I'm in when I'm doing this. I just want to get that correct answer. Okay, so both these bases are square. Well, let's get up these rules again. Here's the rules right there. So 2 to the second, uh, 11 to the second, okay, which is 4 times 121. Now, this one's pretty easy. There's no carrying in this one. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4, so I get 484, and I multiply those, okay? All right, here, this is going to be 2 to the 2nd, which is uh, to the 3rd, which is 2 to the 6th. 2 to the 6th is 64. There's another way we could have done this. We could have done uh, 2 squared is 4, 4 to the 3rd, 4 to the 3rd is also 64. Okay, these are all the same base, so I'm going to add these exponents. 3 plus negative 4 plus negative 1. So it's 3 to those powers, or 5 to those powers, sorry. So 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. So 5 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 5 to the positive 2, so it's 1 25th. Okay, they want to get a little bit more complicated and introduce or reintroduce PEMDAS. So parentheses comes first, okay? Same stuff. We're just manipulating the exponents and then um, uh, uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or whatever. So 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 plus 2 is 7. Let's do the, the parentheses first. I'm not doing anything else. Okay, so here, this is going to be... 3 to the 5th, 3 to the negative 8, this is 7 to the 0. Remember, anything to the 0 is 1. These guys, I'm going to add these exponents. So 5 plus negative 8 is negative 3. So 3 to the negative 3 plus 1. 3 to the negative 3 is 1 over 3 to the positive 3, which is 1 over 27. Plus 1, okay, so um, 1 over 27 plus 1 is just the same as 1 and 1 27. Okay, let's simplify this guy. Do the parentheses first. So I'm going to do 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 squared cubed. This is going to be 4 squared. Okay, so I'm just doing the parentheses first. Okay, powers to powers, we multiply. Now we subtract. Okay, so we get 4 to the 4th, which is going to be 256. All right, almost done, you guys. Okay, let's keep going. Same thing, you guys. I'm going to do the parentheses first right here. So 6 minus 1 is 5, so 5 squared squared. 3 plus 2 is 5, which is 5 to the 3rd. So we get 5 squared squared over 5 to the 3rd. So we get 5 to the 4th, because I multiplied those top exponents over 5 to the 3rd. 5 to the, uh, which gives us 5 to the 1 power when we subtract, which is just 5. All right, so let's do the parentheses first. 10 minus 6 is 4. That's all I'm going to do right there. Now I can do the exponents, okay? So powers to powers, I multiply. So this is 2 to the 6th right here. And then over here, we're going to add these exponents, minus 4 to the 3 plus negative 5 power. Okay, so we get 2 to the 6, and then 4 to the negative 2. 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4 to the positive 2. 2 to the 6 is 32, um, I'm sorry, that's 2 to the 5th. 2 to the 6 is th uh, 64, and then 1 over 4 to the positive 2 is 1 over 16. So 64 minus 1 16th is 63, and 15 16 all right? All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. And, yeah, show your work, you guys. I get students that say, yeah, I did my work in my head, and then I'll just laugh at them and say, okay, I'm going to do your grade in my head, which is a zero. So you got to show your work, you guys. If your math teacher doesn't require you to show your work, get another math teacher, because you won't get good at math unless you're doing your work. And I'm positive your math teacher is uh, requesting you guys show your work. All right, you guys, take care.